Welcome back to the world under the waves. Welcome back to Beneath the Bay of Fundy. In today's video, we're going to continue exploring species of the subtitled coastal habitats of the bay by looking at a selection of different fish species. So let's dive into it. When most people think of life in the ocean, we think of large scary fish, but there's so much more to it when it comes to fish in the Bay of Fundy. Some would be considered ugly, while others are often some of the cutest little lumps. The winter flounder is probably one of those species that would be ubiquitously determined to be not very attractive. However, this flatfish goes through one of the most interesting and intense ontogenetic shifts of all species. Born looking like most other fish, as it grows, one of its eyes actually migrates from one side of its head to the other as it specializes to the benthic lifestyle. However, this isn't even random. In fact, with winter flounder specifically, it's always the left eye that migrates to the right side of the body. This means that the fish will always lay with its right side up. This is one of the big ways that we actually identify this fish from other flat fish in the area. Another species, the window pane flounder, is what is considered a left-sided flatfish. In other words, it lies on its right side with its left side up. Winter flounders are found on both soft and hard bottom habitats where their coloration is actually determined by which areas they tend to spend more of their time. When they're found on soft bottoms, they'll often bury themselves up into the point where nothing but their eyes are actually peeking above the sand. Fish come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, and the rock gunnel has the body shape that is probably the most different from the flatfish. This fish has a snake or eel-like body form. It can be fairly easily identified as they're one of the only species with that body type and that body size. Moreover, they have a stripe that runs across their eyes, making it very easy to distinguish them from other species. This may make this species fairly easy to identify. That does not mean it's actually easy to find. They're always hiding in algae, rock crevices, or anything they can really slither into. It's often easier to find them at night, but either way, it takes a very keen eye to identify this species. While this species, like many others, comes in different colors and patterns, when males of this species are actually ready to mate, they will turn completely bright red as a means of showing that off to prospective females. A fairly similar looking species to the rock metal is the red hake, yet if you know what you're looking for, it's very easy to tell them apart. First, their body is much thicker than that of the rock metal, but more importantly, they have feelers and a barbell under their head. Even while they are referred to as red hake, their color is variable from reddish tint to a darker silver brown. This does not make it easily confusable with the silver hake, as that silver hake doesn't actually have the same feelers. However, it can be hard to tell them apart from the white hake, specifically in the water, but largely in this area, the red hake is more common, and therefore you are far more likely to come across that. Most interestingly, this species actually uses its barbell to perceive its environment. Very similar to the way that a snake can smell the air, it actually has the ability to pick up chemicals from the environment directly through its barbell. Up until now, identifying this species has been pretty straightforward. However, this is not always the case. In some cases, only very small differences is all that can be used to differentiate between two species. This is a shorthorn sculpin, while this is a longhorn sculpin. Their size as well as their color can range significantly. This is probably the group of species that you'll see most frequently near shore in the bay. The easiest difference to try and differentiate between the two is to examine the two most prominent horns on their gill covers. For short horns, the top horn is only twice as long as the second horn, while for long horns, the top horn is over four times longer. When side by side, it's fairly easy to tell the difference, but when they're small and moving around underwater, it becomes way more difficult. These spines do serve a purpose, however, as these fish have the ability to spread out their gill coverings and push these spines forward, making it much harder for them to actually be preyed upon, and it makes them look significantly larger. Lastly, this lumpfish is about as opposite to the flounder as it gets. Largely considered one of the cuter fish species in the region, they have a very boxy body form. This is one of the few species in this region that actually has this body form but a simple way to differentiate them from others is to look for separate lines of little bumps along the side of their body rather than their body being completely covered by the little bumps. That's how you know it's a lumpfish. Lumpfish can often be found attached to something that's solid. As a result of their body shape, they aren't great swimmers, but it's for this reason that they actually have a modified pelvic fin that acts as a suction cup and allows them to stick to surfaces and preserve their energy rather than fight the current. You 
now know how to identify some of the most common fish species in the coastal waters of the Bay of Fundy. Obviously, this is not an exhaustive list, and there are so many more species to find, like this one that I still can't identify. Moreover, every region has its own specific fish communities, not to mention across different bodies of water. But for now, the more time we spend with these species, the better we get at finding and identifying them. So keep diving and protect our oceans. In future episodes of Beneath the Bay, we will further examine other species as well as species that can be found in the intertidal and many other different groups. All this to try and spread awareness of the amazing creatures that live under the waves right off our doorstep. 